Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm checking out the all new VocBook 15 that the company sent out. Now on the back you've got all your specs here. One of the most interesting things is that it has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. That's actually quite a bit and I wonder if that's going to be an overkill for a laptop of this caliber. There's Intel UHD graphics, 15.6 inch 1920x1080 display, it is running Windows 11, and it also has an 8500 milliamp hour battery. I think that's actually quite a lot for a laptop. In the box you've got the laptop itself self here put that to the side the user guide here's the AC adapter along with everything else that comes in the box here here's the laptop itself it's a little thicker and heavier than I expected it to be also you've got most of your ports and LED lights on the right and here's the other half I actually do appreciate that they have more ports than like a MacBook or the trends that all these other companies are going down with having less ports on the bottom, you've got like three rubber tacks, a really long one on top. And then I believe this is where the exhaust is or for the fan. On the side, you've got like two speaker systems. And then in here, down here is where you can install a 2.5 inch hard drive up to two terabytes or a SATA up to four terabytes, an SSD SATA. Here's the keyboard itself, which is actually has some decent feedback. It does feel a little cheap in the middle, but Honestly, not really a problem, a non-issue at this point. Pretty responsive too, no issues whatsoever there. Then there's a trackpad, which also works as multifunction, so you can use two fingers to scroll up and down, or even zoom in on a page, or zoom out. The biggest issue here is the trackpad. It doesn't work properly. I mean, I don't know why this is happening. This is the second time it's happened. If you're a mouse or trackpad kind of guy, then this can be a deal breaker. The quick turnaround or quick fix is getting a mouse that would be the simplest solution. In those moments where you don't have a mouse or can't use it, you're kind of screwed. When you think of tablets, you might remember those old RCA ones with the burn screen. Today's market is much better with affordable options like the BioYear tablet that has a wonderful 1920 by 1200 IPS screen, so you won't have any problems with viewing angles and the colors won't look dull. With these specs, as well as being a large 10 inch screen, this makes it great to watch videos on YouTube at Full HD 1080p, looking at images and can't forget about web browsing. It doesn't stop there. You can also play games on this tablet. Just about any simple 2D game should run flawlessly to more popular 3D games like Roblox or even Asphalt, and you won't notice many delays, if at all. Also, can't forget that with 4 gigs of RAM, you can use the split screen function to have two tabs open and even with the YouTube mini player running. The tablet can last you the whole day with moderate use, and you can get this right now for under $120 on Amazon. Link will be in the description. Also, this hinge goes back by about 180 degrees. I don't exactly know what use case scenario that would be for, but I guess it's a nice feature to have nonetheless. Except the color contrast is just off. So you can watch videos at Full HD 1080p, and then you can also watch on Netflix. I haven't noticed any major issues. The speakers itself are not that great, but they're okay. I mean, I guess they get kind of loud, but they do sound a little bit tinny. The screen itself is decent. It has 300 nits. The average brightness is around two to 300 nits. It's on the slightly higher side of things. The bezels are actually pretty thin, much thinner than I anticipated it would be, which is always nice to see. The webcam is hidden up there with the bezel, so it kind of works out. Here's the video quality and microphone from the webcam. I'm not impressed. It's nothing too special. It's really just like, it seems like there's a filter, a bright filter on top of this. It's not really smooth either. I guess it's somewhat okay. I mean, it's a webcam, can only do so much. So it is what it is. What it is. Two more quick things about the screen. Number one, it isn't a touch screen. And number two, you actually do have a screen protector that comes pre-installed on this. Kind of appreciate that. As for storage space here, there's actually a decent amount. You have about 444 gigs free out of the box, and there is some bloatware that comes pre-installed. I guess this is the norm now on these laptops and Windows 11 devices. There's TikTok pre-installed, as well as Instagram and Prime Video and Messenger. You can actually uninstall these things if you want to, so that's actually nice. That'll save you a couple hundred extra megs, but still, that's still a decent amount here. The graphics is Intel UHD. Here's what I got on CPU-Z. I feel like this is going to be the standard for a little while now, the Intel Celeron N5100. The gigahertz it's clocked at seems pretty low, 1.1 gigahertz. I'm curious to see how well games can actually run on here. I feel like they would run decently, otherwise what's the point of having just 16 gigs of RAM? It seems like a 
complete overkill. Here's HW Info 4 for some temperature screens and whatnot. We're not doing a huge load on anything here right now, so I don't expect it to be hot. If you have any suggestions for benchmark performances, I'm all ears. Any software like that. But besides that, we've got Roblox here, and it seems to run pretty well. No major issues whatsoever. There might be a noticeable drop in frame rates here and there, but it's definitely playable nonetheless. I realized it didn't have uh, best performance on in the battery settings. I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes. I guess it does make a bit of a difference because it was slightly smoother before I started recording. Also, battery life is pretty good on here. I think it tells you how your battery usage on here, which is not accurate. <laughs> it said about three hours just not too long ago, and now it just says one hour and 20 minutes screen on time. So uh, either way, battery life is pretty good from what I've used so far. I haven't tested it out too thoroughly, so take it with a grain of salt, but with a large battery capacity such as this one, I think you'll be just fine. Next game here is Asphalt 9. By the way, Roblox and Asphalt 9 were downloaded from the Windows Store. This game run, seems to run pretty well so far, except when you hit some things, it tends to kind of uh, slow down just for a second. It's like some hiccups here and there. But overall, it's definitely playable. Yeah, not bad. I wanted to check out Dark Souls. It's a game I downloaded via Steam, and uh, it just doesn't run too well. Might be expected. It seems to run a little better at certain points, but I'm at the lowest settings here, basically, and the lowest resolution. Uh, anything higher, even full screen, I only get stuck capped at like 15 frames per second. So 15 FPS is definitely not playable for a game of this caliber, and I should probably head back so I don't die. Oh, what? Oh, man. Overall, I think this is a decent laptop. Uh, there's nothing that really impressed me too much or wowed me besides the amount of RAM, which is still kind of crazy. 16 gigs. Uh, I never really felt like I had to use that much. But maybe you might if you're someone who has a lot of tabs open on Internet Explorer. <laughs> That's not even a thing anymore, but basically a web browser or something along those lines. Maybe it's possible, worthwhile. But I'm curious to see how this market performs because I feel like there's more of these like off-branded uh, laptops coming out now. So I'll definitely be checking out more of those. So be sure to subscribe for that and leave a like if you did find this video helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next one.